Hello and welcome to RJC Models. So, where have we been all these wings? Well, just as a quick explanation, um, I've been really, really busy with work, lots of overtime, that sort of stuff. Um, just been a bit hectic. Um, also, I've, got, I've been really, really ill for the past few weeks, for about three weeks now. Um, also, Clarice was away, so she was um, unable to look after the, the dogs and that sort of stuff, so I've been doing a bit of dog sitting. Um, so, however, we are back in force. We are, we've got a few good things coming up on the channel. Um, today is the start of one of the, exci one of the exciting things. Um, please, please, please look out later for a review of this, which is the Revell 132 scale Hawker Hunter. So that review will be up here today. Um, but the main reason for the video today is that I will be building, well, I won't be building, there'll be a build video, a build thread of this, the Revell Mark V Spitfire, but it won't be me building it. So without further ado, here's the person that's going to be building it. Okay, so as I realise, obviously, that my picture updates and the videos that I put on here do inspire a lot of people, uh, what I realised is that um, I don't actually do anything to help out the beginner. So what I thought I would do is just to teach someone how to build a model. So with a budding volunteer in Clarice, I'm going to teach her how to build the Spitfire. So what we'll do is we'll move the cameras around, get a bit comfortable, she'll take the hot seat and we'll go from there. Bam. So we're doing this? Yep. But what, as a beginner, what's the best thing to start with? Uh, so the best thing to start with, what i found is, um, if you build in one seventy second scale, because the models are very usually come up very small when they're built. Which that's what this is. Yeah, yeah, the scale just there. Um, they're usually very small models when they're finished. Um, they're quite quick, so a beginner can do them in a weekend. Sat down with someone that knows what they're doing, do it in a weekend. How long would it take you to do? Uh, myself, it probably take a few hours, um, but then I would go into a, a bit more detail, reference pictures, and that sort of stuff. But a beginner could do it in a weekend. So I mean, they, they, I started my first kit at the age of about seven, um, and my dad just sat down with me, and we sat up, down for the weekend, did it, and went from there. Um, so that's how long it took us to for my first kit. Well, you've got a few years on me. <laughs> well. Okay, so should we show people what they get in the? Yeah, we'll show, we'll show them what they get there, shall we? So, what I've always found for a beginner is so we've got the sprues here. This is your, your fuselage and your wheels, propeller, spinner, your wings, the fins on the rear, the cockpit, that sort of stuff. Um, and what I've always, and the, the, the little clear bit of canopy there, some decals. So, as I said, it's very, 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 a very sparse kit, so there's not a lot in there. I'm just going to put the decals back Yeah, in. You put, so I don't get them broken. Um, put that in there as well. Yeah, yeah. So that's the, the best thing to do is to keep your, your decals and your the information sheets and your, your transparent parts in the box out of the way, so you're not going to get them scratched or anything like that. Um, but one thing I've always said to beginners, um, with the sprues, this is the, this is a sprue here, this is the bit of plastic that they're all vacuum molded onto. Um, the best thing to do is, so you don't get confused, is to mark the sprues just here. So this is sprue A, um, and with the other one, there's only two sprues in this one, so you get sprue A and a sprue B. Um, and this just makes it easier to transpose onto the the instructions. So just here it says A26, so you're looking for sprue A26. So it's sprue A part 26. The so. numbers are so small. Yeah. Um, another good thing to do is if you get, um, say, like a Sharpie or something like that, um, or there it is. Okay. like a marker pen, yeah. um, just to, obviously the, the, the letters are in this corner here, oh, sorry, the numbers are in this corner here, and just to go over them, just with the, with the marker, just so you can see, it pops the, the numbers out a little bit. Does that help any? Mm. It's not really any different, to be honest, so okay. I won't do it. Alright, okay. So, I mean, some of them do it. Some, it, it, it's, 
It depends really how, how, how you how you see it. So, should we get started? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so, right, okay, so, what we do is we get to start in on step number one, which Love is, this. yeah, which is um, building the cockpit. Okay. So what we're looking for is part A, number 26, which, which is there. just already found. Yep. So, so what you I want to do? I guess I just cut it off the sprue. Yeah, yeah. What we what I usually use is um, quite a sharp surgical blade, something like that. Um, these are quite inexpensive. Um, once you've bought the handle, you just buy the the knife, the, the blades. Blade. Yeah, yeah. Which I mean, the, the 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 knife's about the handle's about five quid, and then the blades are about fifty pence each or something. It's or quite comfortable to hold. Yeah, yeah. Or you could use sort of something like this. Um, which again, they're they're quite inexpensive. You get about ten of these in a pack. Would um, a Stanley knife not be a bit more difficult? I know um, you can get thinner ones. Yeah, I mean you can get smaller ones. I, mean, I don't know if you want to use both of them. But one of the smaller ones here. So you get a few different ones like this in a pack. Um, these are about a pound each. But the good thing is you can, like those, you can change the blades. But with this, you just snap the ends off, mm. and then you got another bit. Um, I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's personal preference, really. I, I like using those because you get, well. yeah, do it a bit lighter. Um, so, what you want to do? We have so we found our part here. Um, so you see this little tab bit just there. Here. Yep. So if you lay the knife that way, just pop it off of there. There you go. You should go like sort of like a little click noise when you. Yep, that one there. And then what you do... Are those always as easy as that to take off? Or? Some of them can be, yeah. I mean, it, it, they get a bit difficult to sort of see where around the nose section here with the fuselage. Um, and then what you do is, what I tend to do is get a pair of um, either side cutters like this. Again, quite readily available, quite exp cheap. Um, or, um, where do I put them? I usually use a pair of what they call sprue cutters. Um, which are a bit more expensive, they're more of a model making tool. There they are. Um, so they're a bit more of a model making tool. Um, but these are, yeah, they, those are a little bit more expensive. And the good thing is with those is, as you can see, they're, they're curved. See the way that they, they curve off at an angle, so you can curve round mm -hmm. that, that nose section. Um, but, so now you've got your piece off. What you've got there, I don't know if you can see it. They call these like a tab. Some people call them tabs. Some so people call them. So you cut the tab off. Yeah. So you just, uh, you just cut the tab off. You use it at there you go, right angle like that. So if you do that on all four corners, this see that you got that tab there. That one's probably just a, you probably want to get in there with a knife. You can give it a go. There we go. And then see this here. You need to cut that bit off there. So that's nice and flush. So just to make sure it is nice and flush and you've got a nice square surface, um, what you tend to do is get a stand, like a sanding stick, something like this. Um, so you just take the edges off. I mean, the, the sanding sticks, um, I buy those from, uh, again, a specialist model model supplier, but you can use you like an emery board, like what you use for using fingernails with. For I feel like I'm doing right yeah, yeah. So it's just like that. Just taking the edges off, making it nice and nice and flat, nice and smooth, nice and flush. And like you're doing there, just making it nice and feel, making sure it feels okay. You're not going to get any mist moulds. Is that okay? That's yeah, that's fine. So as you can see, it's nice and nice and square. No, nothing poking out the side or anything like that. Okay. So the next bit you want is the driver's seat. So you got it here. So that's, that's um, looking for the little the little letter and the number. B four. So it's B four. Yeah, I, I believe it's on the other sprue just there. Do, do, do. Okay. Is that bit? Oh. And so I can just take the. The tabs off. Some people complain about, oh, it takes ages to take tabs off and to to take all the nubs off. But I actually quite enjoy cleaning up the parts and that sort of stuff. It's quite enjoyable. It's quite therapeutic, actually. Mm, yeah, yeah. 
Now the best thing for those as well is if you get um, uh, one of the sanding sponges we've got here, obviously these are quite readily available. Um, so you can feel the difference. This one's more of a sponge. Yes, yeah, so would that be more to... Um... To go around circles and... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so if you were like that, that nose piece I showed you earlier, what I do is, if I just show you here... Just, that's more of a buffer, isn't it? Than a well, it's, it's, sander. it's still a sander, but what it does is, see, like, say if this was your part, Yeah. Um, you put your... You haven't really got to put any pressure on it, so you get your part and your, your sanding sponge and see how it just conveys. Mm -hmm. And then, so it doesn't take the shape away. Yeah, yeah. So you get the, you get the shape. So on there you have a nice round, that like sort of oval shaped cockpit. Is that right? Yeah, that's fine. So what we will do, and what I'll show you is, I don't know if you can see it there. Um, I don't know if the guys at home can see that either. But just on the seat belt, on the seat there, you've got some belts. Mm -hmm. See the little lines there. And what I'll do is, once we've built it all up, I'll show you how to paint and finish the cockpit off um, and pick those out okay. um, just so you can get a little bit of detail in there um, and then the next part we're looking for is and yep and this part is the uh, I think it's the armor plate behind the driver behind the pilot it's so fiddly it is a little bit fiddly but it's 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 quite nice when they come to fruition and you get a nice little model at the end of it I'm guessing that's that part uh, yes. Yeah. there. Yeah, so it's this part just here. So what, sometimes what you'll get is you'll get the part in the middle of the sprue just there, and the number down the bottom, just yeah, yeah. So you get the part just here, and then the number is down in the corner there. Some because it's just because it's a little bit easier for the injection molding to rather than put it in the corner um, there. I'm assuming I'm going to cut sort of. Here rather than at the edge. Yes, yeah, so you cut nearer the part rather than. Um, so you cut in. So I'm cutting like here. Yeah, flush up against. See this the square bit. You're yeah. cutting nice and flush up against the square bit. Mm. Oh, <laughs> that was obviously must it must have been bent in the, the box. So what you've got on that piece there is um, where your thumb is just there. See this bit here? Mm -hmm. That's what they call flash. And what it is is when they in injection, when I put the injector, the, the injector plastic into the mold, you'll get when it cools down, when it comes off, you'll see just a little bit of flash. Camera's on the other side. Yeah, <laughs> little bit of flash just there, um, and that's basically where in the molding process, where the molds come away, there's a little bit of plastic that's just sort of stuck to the the part. So we just cut that off. Yep. And then or you can cut it off, or you can use either your sponge or your stick just to. Yeah, yeah. With that one. Like for this one. <laughs> yeah. Again, tools and things are all down to personal choice. The same, it's the same with glues and glues, paints, that sort of stuff. Um, so the, the glue I usually like to use is um, Tamiya Extra Thin. Um, I'm yeah, yeah. Just to take that off there a little bit. If you use the the clippers the other way, there we go. You can you can get a nice flush. Is it being a bit awkward? <laughs> yeah, get a nice flush finish then. Boring you that much, you <laughs> Okay, so now we've got the control panel cut out mm -hmm. and all the flesh tidied up. Um, what we're actually going to do now is give this a quick coat of paint so we haven't got to worry about going back in there later on with paint brushes, anything like that. Um, what I'd like to what the paint I like to use for that is this one here, um, it's a Hataka. Um, and what this is, is it's, it's the actual color that the inside of the Spitfire would have been. So the same sort of like for like green. There are other, I mean that's the other one that you would use, you could use for inside of cockpits. But this is an actual cockpit grey green. Um, and the reason I like using this is it's quite thick um, and um, it doesn't really need a lot of priming. Whereas usually what you do a bit more advanced, a bit more along the line once you've learned techniques and stuff, is you'd prime this first 
um, and then come along and then paint it on top. Um, and just for the sake of obviously showing how to do it um, as a beginner, um, we'll use a bit of a bit of a thicker, bit more of a thicker paint, um, and then obviously go from there. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a. This is just like an old business card sort of thickness. Um, and you can get these, which are very, very handy, and I'd recommend to anyone. And these are actual like sprung load, sprung loaded tweezers, so you can put stuff in there and not have to worry about holding on to the tweezers while you're hot painting. Um, so what we're going to do is pop those into the into the the tweezers there. So pop it in there, um, and we're going to use a very small brush. Um, I'm going for a. This is a number double O nine brush, a double double O brush. Sorry, um, any brush will do really. I mean, it, obviously it's what you can afford and what you can get at the time. Mm -hmm. um, obviously there are other brands available, so we're just going to use a small bit of this, just a tiny little like, say the size of a pea, probably a little bit, bit more than that of, okay. of this. Um, so you probably want to put on about um, just onto your card there, probably about. About that much. Mm -hmm. um, so, if you compare it to the size of your finger, so it's probably that sort of size. Um, and what you want to do is just dip the tip of the brush in. So, you've got a nice bit just on the tip because what you don't want to do is what a lot of people do is they so you just want a bit on the tip like you've got there. You don't want it to come down to the, the metal bit down to here because um, that's what ruins brushes so what it, what it will do is the paint will run down and sort of just do that to the brush so you get like a splay, splay in of the, the bristles okay. so what we're going to do is just pop, the, pop a bit of paint on so you want to go onto the control panel there, the top bit and then down the sides nice yep, and the bit top there, that's, that's, that would be so on the instructions I'll show you here because obviously Clarice is painting the, the cockpit. So the bit she's doing is just this bit here and that there. So that bit at the top you've got there, you're just painting, would be um, his compass. So it'd be the, the pilot's compass. Um, there you go. It's a nice thin layer on there. So I mean it's quite it's very thin but very thick if it makes any sense. It covers quite quickly but it's still very still very thin. And it all seems to go a long way. Yeah, yeah, it's very, that's, that is the, the trick with that stuff. It goes, it is very, very good. And the, the, the good thing with, with the Hataka paints is that that's actually that actually came in an, an REF set. So the, the other sets that I've got were the greys, the greens, the browns, that sort of stuff that they actually used um, on the Spitfires. Okay. So I'm just going to adjust this a bit. Yeah. A bit of light, a little bit of light edge in there, shall we? And am I doing the other side? Um, no, don't worry about the other side because obviously that side's not going to get seen. So it's just okay. the, a bit there. So as you can see, I mean, these you, you'd usually paint these little control pedals at the bottom grey. Oh, okay. But um, I think in this go, it doesn't really matter too much. You know, for a, a beginner level, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, so that that's that for there. Um, what we'll do is we'll let that dry and put that to pop that to the side. So that's another good thing, I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but another good thing about these tweezers is that they sit um, at an angle, so you've got a bit of a gap underneath there, so you, you, the part that you've just painted isn't touching your cutting mat, so you, you, when you go and pick it up you haven't just lost a lot of your paint on the mm -hmm. cutting mat. Um, so what we'll do is turn that to the side, if we just wash the tip of the brush into the water there, uh, get some roll, good old blue roll. Other brands of roll are available. <laughs> so, what we're doing out now, we'll wait for that to dry. If we pop those bits and pieces to the side, get this out of the way. Um, if we go back to our um, our seat and the, that sort of stuff, we should now be out. That should be dry now to put that rear armor plate on. And we decided it sits under. Sits under, yeah, yeah. So the best thing to do is if you pop a bit of glue on the back on the back of the seat first. I was going to do it there. Yeah, yeah, you could do it there. Yeah. Do it there, and then when you put it on, just 
drop, drop a bit in there. There's that lovely clue smell again. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> yeah, this that chair does really need an island. <laughs> Always oil, oil your chair, people. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> this chair needs oiling. See, it's, it's quite finite work in this scale, but you don't want anything too big and cumbersome that's f like wobbling around and you've got to hold it and that sort of stuff. Some people say that the bigger scales are better to start with, but I think if the, the smaller the scale, you, you can learn to be a bit more, not patient, but a bit more careful and a bit more, take a bit more time with it. Okay, that should do you now. Just pop that to one side. Yep, pop that to one side. So that's the, so here you've got the armour plate, which would protect the driver, uh, the, the driver, the pilot even, from any bullets coming from the rear. And I think there's an electrical box in there as well. And on the front there you've got his his seat and his his harnesses but so we'll go into another video on how to paint the harnesses there um, so the good thing about that Hataka paint is that it's acrylic so that should some be somewhere near dry already it is dry yeah so what we'll do now is what I like to do is get some um, diluted oil uh, do a little pink paint um, actually um, and put a wash over that those little details so it makes it pop out a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so what we'll do is we'll get some ink. So this is just uh, a wash that I made years and years and years ago. So what that is, is just artist's ink um, with a little bit of water. Mm -hmm. um, and as you can see, it's made it sort of like a, a wash. You can see that in there. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like a consistency of like water. Um, so what we do, if we have that black, brush there. Citadel. Yeah. Other brands of paintbrush are available. <laughs> um, so we're, we're with... This is starter brush, so is that? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that'd be the sort of thing you'd buy. So that sort of size you can, um, that sort of tip size you can sort of do anything with and it'd be quite good just for, for a starter. Um, this is actually um, one of my older brushes because I usually, usually use a lot of older brushes for my washes that sort of stuff okay. um, so what you do is just pop a bit like you did with the paint pop a bit out of the, the pot there um, on the tip there we go and just is that yep so what you do is just run you haven't got to be too careful just sort of scrub it on there oh I see it makes it sort of pop and so, yeah see the details pop out and um, so I said the the, the the decal is very good, um, but so I like to do it this way because um, it looks a bit more realistic. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, if you if you're obviously want to get into a bit more modelling, um, you probably could put a bit get away with putting a little bit more on there as well. Um, yeah, if you want to get into this sort of modelling, it's always I, I find it always very good to use what's there. So you're practicing your techniques, like your washing, your dry brushing, that sort of stuff. This also seems to make it look a lot more authentic. Yeah, yeah, because obviously um, with the, the, the decal, although you could get you get like um, fixing agents, um, which we call like uh, micro set or decal fix, which will actually set the decal into those recesses. Um, I think it's very good because obviously you don't get the grimy look that that would be. It would be very, very mm. grimy and dirty, that sort of that look there. So now that's, that, that will take a few minutes to dry underneath the, the light there. Um, so while it's doing that, we'll pop back to our... <coughs> excuse me, pop back to our seat and put on the, the, the arm, the, the uh, control panel, the control stick even. Again, what we'll do is once we've um, got it all glued together, um, I'll show you how to paint this whole bit together. So it'll be the, the seat and the rear arm and that sort of stuff. So okay. when you're looking for? So A3. Yep. 
Jeez, this bad boy right here. Yep, that's the one. See, another good, another good trick you could see the way that was quite a fine, fine part. Yeah. So another good trick you could do is, um, if you're scared about, because what like we we've had before parts ping off. Yeah. Um, with small parts like that, and especially with like the, um, I'll show you with the area when we get to that part doing the small details. Is that better with the spray cutters? Or? Um, what you actually do is you can still use the knife, but if you get a bit of uh, a blue tack, white tack, anything like that. Yeah. Actually, put it underneath the screw. So screw. It bounce back yeah and it yeah. actually sticks to the, the part actually sticks to the blue tack right so it doesn't ping off so I suppose you're giving it that little bit of uh, support yeah yeah so it's not it's not pressure on pressure and it pinging off somewhere mm -mm 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 -mm. It's so tiny it is isn't it yeah I, I tell you I've not built a, a 70 second scale kit for a while um, it's my little finger <laughs> See how tiny. Yeah, they're, they're very, very small, and that's it. That's what I mean by um, with this scale of kit. If you practice the 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 techniques you're taught, you can actually make quite a lot out of a tiny little thing. I just need those. What's that? I need those really. <laughs> yeah. Just so it looks nice. And obviously that goes in a little little bit there in the middle. And another glue I used to use a lot when I was first starting is something like this. I'll just show you. This was one of the first, sort of, not the first tubes I bought, but this is a, a glue I used to buy quite frequently. Um, made by Ravel again. It's um, a, a little bit thicker, but it's got a little needle on the end of it, so you can be a bit more precise. Um, that, but the, the good thing, it's obviously, as you can see there, the good thing is with that is you've got a bit more control. Whereas this is obviously, although it's very, still very fine, it comes out quite quite thick and quite gloopy so it just comes out in like a spurt rather than a controlled swipe. Okay, so I've done that. Yeah, is that all I need now? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so what we actually went ahead and did was um, we went ahead and glued the cockpit and control panel to the um, to the seat and that sort of stuff just here as you can see just there. Um, so what to get to this stage that is in this particular kit would be from one to three um, what we're actually going to do now is in the next video um, we will go from four and five so what four and five is is gluing the two fuselage halves together and doing the wings so starting on the wings and putting the bits and pieces on the wings um, what i'll actually show you how to do is on the fuselage halves. I don't know how well you can see that. Um, there we go. I don't know where you can see that, but actually in the fuselage itself is um, just some tiny bits of detail. So what I'll do is I'll show you how to pick those out um, with just a very, very simple paint technique. Okay, so that's everything from us this evening, and we shall see you in the next video. So that's thank you from RJC Models. Bye.